How would you feel if you caused a severe surgical complication, even an avoidable leg amputation, simply because you missed a single anatomical variant on a routine MRI? That's a radiologist's nightmare. A nightmare that for one of my fellows nearly became a reality. But what is this anatomical variant? Why can missing it lead to such severe complications? And what can you do to ensure you never miss this variant in new reports again? To explain that, let me share with you how I found out about this variant in the first place. I was on a coaching call with one of my fellows going through a knee MRI case she was struggling with. A senior colleague had criticized her for missing an anatomical variation in the knee, a variant known as an aberrant anterior tibial artery or AATA. I thought, wait, what? The AATA? How come that I've never heard of that? Or at least I did not remember it at the time anymore. So after the session, feeling a little bit disturbed, I dived into the literature. And the more I read, the more shocked I became at how important it is to identify this variant. There are even case reports about such injuries leading to post-surgical compartment syndrome with muscle necrosis and at least one case with a subsequent amputation. How had I never noticed this in all my time working in an orthopedic university hospital, talking all the time directly with knee surgeons? Nobody was ever asking us about this variant either. It was embarrassing, honestly. How many of these had I missed in my career? Maybe none, maybe it's genetic and Swiss people don't have this variant, I don't know, but that seems unlikely. However, I have solved a more practical problem which will help your patients keep their legs on. I have developed an easy to remember approach to detect this variant every time. And since that coaching session, I've seen this variant twice already within just a few weeks, proving that Swiss people have it too, after all. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to spot it and report it to prevent a nasty letter from a malpractice lawyer in the near future. But before we can dive into the variant, we first need to review the normal vascular of the knee, specifically we'll focus on the popliteal artery and its branches. Here we have the normal situation. This is a knee from behind, we can see the popliteal artery coming down and then branching off of the anterior tibial artery here, then it runs between tibia and fibula through into the anterior compartment then going down. So this is the normal course of the anterior tibial artery. We can see the popliteus muscle here is between the bone and the vessels. And then here the second branch is the tibiofibular trunk which will then further divide into the fibular and posterior tibial artery here. So this is the normal situation and this is also what you can see on a normal MRI. Femur, popliteal artery and the adjacent popliteal vein. So we follow the artery down here, we don't see any major branches going off. And then we are at the level of the popliteus muscle. It's behind the popliteus muscle and we have no branches going anywhere. And we can see here, this is the vein. So this is not the anterior tibial artery here with uh, origins, it's just flow void in the popliteal vein, which gets compressed between these different muscles here in this position. Now that we refreshed the normal vascular anatomy, let's see what makes the AATA variant so risky and how you can detect it before it's too late. Here in this normal case again, I just want to highlight what it's sometimes referred to as the danger zone. So the danger zone is basically the area here behind the proximal tibia, because when you do arthroplasty and osteotomies of the tibia, then the surgeon has to cut through the bone. And when they cut from anterior or from the side, you know, you don't want to cut too deep because then you will injure the muscle here. And if you cut very deep, then technically you would be here in an area where we have a big nerve and big vessels. So we don't want to injure this here. So this behind the tibia here is kind of like the danger zone, which needs to be protected. Now let's see what happens if we have a different anatomic situation. This variation here is called a high origin or a high division of the anterior tibial artery. And you can see, as opposed to the previous case, where the branching was much lower here in the normal situation, this time the origin or the branch of the anterior tibial artery is much higher up. This can be anywhere on this course, but this is just an extreme example. And you now have two arteries here going into the popliteal fossa or potentially down into the danger zone. But you can see in this high origin variant, you have both arteries behind the popliteus muscle, which kind of like protects these neurovascular structures in this area from surgery. So this is uh, not an aberrant course, this is just a high origin, but the course of the artery itself then still is normal behind the popliteus artery. Now let's have a look at the aberrant version. So the aberrant anterior tibial artery here. Again, we have a high origin, but this time the artery goes between or underneath the popliteus muscle, as you can see here. So it's now running between muscle and bone. And then it goes down, same location down here. The only difference really is it goes between muscle and bone, whereas in the high origin, it 
is behind the muscle too. So that's basically the origin. And this is the aberrant anterior tibial artery here. These are the axial series and we can see the popliteus artery with the adjacent vein next to each other. And you can see here, we have the branching off of the tibial, anterior tibial artery here at the level of the joint space. So a little bit lower than I showed you on the diagrams. This is the vein adjacent to it with a lot of flow voids. And now you can see how this artery runs right behind the tibial cortex together with the two veins down underneath here, the tibia and uh, tibia and fibula under this tunnel with the two veins. So this is here the normal course, but it runs between muscle and bone, which is not normal. So normally the artery would go off here and then go this way. So let's have a look at the literature. And this is probably the best article here by Klecker et al. The aberrant anterior tibial artery here. This is a couple of years old and they have nice images, which I would like to show you here. They also talk about um, what happened here. So basically uh, the idea why they started this study was because they saw basically three patients with vascular complications after surgery with this variant and one of these cases had a subsequent below the knee amputation so you can see it's a serious thing they also show you the same nice diagram with the normal variation and then the high origin but then also an aberrant course here of the anterior tibial artery here and how this looks like in a normal situation where there's no variant and then you have the variant between muscle and bone, just like I showed you in my case. You can see why this artery can be at risk. So you have meniscal repairs. If they have a lateral meniscus posterior tear when, when they do some suturing here, potentially if they go too deep, they might actually injure this artery here. Uh, arthroplasties, if they saw through the bone and take out the bone here, the cartilage portion, they might cut it in here. If they do high tibia osteotomies, they might cut through here. If they put in some screws, or even if they do some form of PCL reconstructions. So a lot of different interventions where this might be a problem. So after seeing this, I called one of the knee surgeons and I, I talked to him and I asked him, do you know the variant aberrant anterior tibial artery? And do you look at the images yourself? Because nobody ever asks us radiologists about this, at least not where I am reporting. And he had to Google it too. He didn't know the variant. They know they can potentially injure the vessel and what they apparently do where they put in some form of a shield or like a protective device when they do these osteotomies and then that way they kind of like prevent anything from happening back here in the danger zone. So that's why they don't really need to know about this variant. But still, I think for us, the Georgias, we still want to be aware and we want to report this. So and the last thing that I want to show you is an easy approach or trick how you will never really miss this variant ever again. So let's assume you just report your knee MRI, you do the template that I suggest, uh, your medial, lateral, central, and then patellofemoral. Now the very last thing before closing down the study, and that's what I have implemented in my search pattern is just open the axials. I go once like this, I scroll through, and I just check the danger zone. And I just check if there's a vessel or not. If there is a vessel, I report it. If there is no vessel, I don't say anything. And this is just taking like two seconds. And that way you will never really miss this variant ever again. This also illustrates how everybody can learn from each other. And this is exactly what we do in the Virtual MSK Fellowship. It's what I call exponential learning. Even seasoned MSK radiologists like me pick up new things all the time because MSK is so deep and rich. To learn more about knee MRI, watch these videos in my knee MRI list.